Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Studio A. Now, as you can see, we're clearly not in the studio. We're down here at Soft Belly Bar, 367 Little Burke Street in the city. The reason being is we're giving you the first ever Studio A stand-up special tonight. It's like a mini version of the gala, and when I say mini, I mean freaking tiny. Nick, why are you just standing there? I'm excited. Okay, let's hit the showers, champ, and get this show on the road. Tommy, time to go. Coming to you live from the heart of Melbourne, it's Studio A with Tommy Little. Starring John Cambo Campbell. Luke McGregor. Nick Cody. Carl Chandler. Xavier Michaelides. And Tegan Higginbotham. And on tonight's show, we have Dave O'Neill. Anyone for tennis? The Studio A cast. And now, please go wild for your host, Tommy Leno. A little bit of, is good, a lot is great, that much, a little bit fucking patronising. <laughs> Still good. Great to all see you here tonight. Uh, it's beautiful to see you out for what is our first Studio A stand-up special. Uh, you may have noticed there weren't many signs out the front. We saved it all for the fireworks display. Hit it! Maybe later. We'll see how we go. Firstly, thank you everyone for coming out. I will start by telling you a little bit about myself, right? I'm 26 years old. I just turned 26. Now, 26 is one of those age... is <laughs> When things start to happen that have never happened before in your life, right? I've started having thoughts that I've never had before and it scares the shit out of me, right? I walked outside the other day and there was like a warm breeze in the air and I had a thought that I've never had in my life, right? I had this thought. I went, ooh, I better do the washing because it's a good day for drying sheets. <laughs> What the hell is that? And I know I'm not getting old, right? I don't, when I say I'm getting older, I don't mean I'm getting old. I'm not at the stage yet where I carry around a hanky, right? <laughs> Even though I think hankies are awesome, hankies are amazing, right? Hankies are for all those times you snot into a tissue and you look at it and think, geez, I want to hold on to that for a while. <laughs> is, this, is everyone single in this crowd? Yes. <laughs> Why are we doing a comedy show? Let's just chuck our keys in the center bowl and kick things off. <laughs> I'm single, right? I'm, I'm painfully single because I'm no good at the relationship thing, but I'm also no good at the one night stand thing, like at all, right? To me, like one night stands and kebabs are exactly the same. <laughs> like they both only happen when you're drunk or incredibly sloppy and you get halfway through and think, I can't possibly finish this. <laughs> and I just never want to do a walk of shame again in my life, right? You know, it's the next day, you're in a suburb, you don't know where the hell you are, you're walking down the street, the sun's beaming down on you, you stink because you're wearing the same clothes the night before, your makeup's all smeared, and that's, <laughs> that's weird because you weren't wearing any the night before, right? <laughs> but I think if you are dating, it's important to be responsible, right? If you are going to go on a first date, buying a condom before you go is responsible. Buying a morning after pill, a little bit arrogant, right? <laughs> but <laughs> this is like, so this is like a standard conversation for me with a girl, right? I did a gig last week and after the gig, a girl came up to me and she goes, that was really funny. And I said, thanks, that's lovely, I, I appreciate it. And she goes, yeah, I love Russell Brand. <laughs> I went, yeah, yep, he's, he's cool. And she goes, yeah, I love Russell Brand. Oh, he's so clever. He's so clever. Have you ever thought about being clever with your comedy? <laughs> Which, to be honest, I never have, right? <laughs> so I've come up with a two-step plan to make myself appear 20% more intelligent without fail, right? The first step is simply when someone asks you the question, have you seen something? You respond with the answer, mm, I preferred the book. The second step is then, if they get confused, 
You simply blow some air out of your mouth, shake your head and walk away. Because this girl then went on to talk to me and she said, oh, uh, hey, by the way, have you seen a girl with a dragon tattoo? And I went, mm, I preferred the book. And she went, oh, okay. Oh, hey, did you see the news this afternoon? And I went, mm, I preferred the book. And she went, you mean the newspaper? And I went, Uh, guys, we have a banging night of comedy for you installed. Are you ready to kick this thing off? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this first comedian was once rated the second funniest man in his family. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Nick Cody. Yeah. Hello, everyone. How are we? We're doing well? Yes, awesome. Good on you guys. Drinking on a weeknight. That's how you do it. I appreciate that. People that drink, that smoke, gamble. I love gambling. Big gambling fan. And I don't mean like poker or blackjack. I'm more of a no condom kind of guy. Um, <laughs> let's be honest, that game goes for fucking weeks. <laughs> no spots today. Winner. Unfortunately, I'm currently down on that game. Uh, to be fair though, if you lose 500 on blackjack, you can't get that back with some cream. So, I've picked the right activity. I do love drinking. I've, I've never done drugs though. Uh, and apparently that's sad because I'm 23 and a lot of my friends partake in drugs. I've never done them though for the saddest reasons of all. Like, I've never done ecstasy because I can't swallow tablets. <laughs> And I think it's way too embarrassing to be at Good Vibes and ask a dealer for a pill and a scoop of ice cream. <laughs> I've got some self-respect. <laughs> I've had a girlfriend now for like 10 months, which is ugh. But uh, I was single for ages. Like I was single for almost 10 years because I've, I've got red facial hair and like this. That's not a good situation. It's just fucking Nando's means Twilight. This isn't good. <laughs> Not many people sleep with this on purpose, is what I'm trying to say. And uh, I was single for so long uh, that a couple years ago at a Christmas function, I threw it out there to my family. Hey guys, any tips on how to meet some nice young girls? And uh, my grandpa was there and uh, he chipped in with some advice. Now, I didn't want to listen to grandpa because he's old and fucking irrelevant. <laughs> Never stopped him before though. He just asks up, hey Nick. You want to meet some lovely young girls? You've got to be like we were in the 50s. You've got to be chivalrous. Be a gentleman. He said, Nick, chivalry's dead. And I said, I don't think chivalry's dead, Grandpa. I think chivalry's either brand new or it never existed. Like, sure, back in the 50s, you probably gave Nana a coat when it was raining outside, but you probably also punched her if she had an opinion. So... <laughs> Don't know if the 50s is the era to look to on how to be a good bloke. Uh, my grandpa was born in 1922. What could he tell any of us in here about how to act appropriately in 2011? What are his life tips going to be? Nick, remember these two things, sport. Always hold the door open for anybody standing behind you and black people should never vote. <laughs> what an enchanting era you come from, grandpa. Glad a lot of you died of polio. Um, <laughs> have a good night. Cheers. Nick, you just finished your spot. How'd it go? Smashed it. No, I just saw that. I destroyed. That was it. We can put a laugh track on. We can put a laugh track. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, don't go away. We've got plenty more stand-up coming away after this break. Everybody, welcome back to Studio A Stand Up Special. Anything the viewers should know about tonight? The reason I programmed this song on Rage, Tommy, is um... wrong show oh, again, shit. ladies and gentlemen. Here comes some comedy from the man in stripes, Carl Chandler. Oh yeah, I was watching this movie on TV. It was interesting. It was a movie about cannibals, and in this movie, 
There was this one scene where there was this cannibal chasing this explorer through the jungle. And it went for a couple of minutes. And you could see that explorer start to slow down, eventually stop. And then he just collapsed. And immediately the cannibal has picked him up, carried him back to his camp, and he ate him. And I was like, fair enough. Three second rule. <laughs> I, uh, I saw this guy in the street, he was wearing sunglasses, he was walking a greyhound. I was like, man, that is a blind dude in a hurry. <laughs> He's got places to go, people to hear. I, uh, this, is, uh, this is what I really want to do one morning. I want to get up really early, break into the zoo, take all my clothes off, sneak into an empty monkey cage, and when the zookeepers walk past, yell like, hey, let me out, I just evolved. <laughs> I'd like to go to the library, get out all the books on Feng Shui, put them back in the wrong section, <laughs> mess their shit up. <laughs> I thought I was reading a pop-up book about moths. Turns out, it was just an old book. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was watching this movie about pirates in this one scene. There was like these four pirates standing side by side and they each had a wooden leg. And I looked at them and went, man, that would make a scary gang or a weird fucking table. <laughs> I, uh, you know, people don't like it when they hear about a child being bought or sold. But people do like it when they hear about a child being adopted. So what I've learned from that is that people just want to hear about a bargain. <laughs> what about this? I wonder if midgets call mini golf, golf. <laughs> and then call regular golf, maxi golf. <laughs> I wonder if brothels have Tight Ass Tuesday. <laughs> and if they do, I wonder if it's cheaper or more expensive. <laughs> I, uh, I was outside a bar one night and there was a pair of identical twins and they both had to pull out their IDs at the same time. And I was like, snap! And I got to keep them. <laughs> I, uh, I was reading this book by the Austrian psychologist Sigmund Freud. And in it, he says, there are no accidents. And I was like, wow. That means my grandma's been shitting her pants on purpose. <laughs> That's an old woman desperate for attention. <laughs> All right, thanks guys, I've been Carl. Are you burping? Yeah, I'm, I've got a burp just rising right now. Tell me. It's on its way. No, it's fine, it's gone. Can you get it out before you're set? It's gone upwards into the brain area. Ladies and gentlemen, more stand-up as part of Studio A Stand-Up Spectacular. I'm doing stand-up? <laughs> All right. Hey, everyone. Cool. All right, now, before I start, I just want to thank the person who provided me with this and with this. These are gonna come in handy. I'm gonna use these tonight. They're pretty essential to the whole thing. So thank you to whoever provided them. They're gonna, they're gonna come in handy. They're gonna be good. Now I know what some of you are thinking. I could just No. Because then eventually I'm going to have to shout. And there are some things you can't shout. For instance... This Gumball tea is soothing! <laughs> it doesn't work. Another one is... I just put this baby to sleep! <laughs> you woke that baby up. <laughs> they are hard to put to sleep. Another one is... I'm hiding in the library! <laughs> They found you. <laughs> and you've ruined the ambience of the library. 
someone could have been reading Harry Potter. You know, up to the bit with the wizards. <laughs> Ruined. I'm going to do an impersonation for you now. But I don't do normal impersonations. I like to combine impersonations. The ones people usually do. So imagine if Robert De Niro was Chewbacca. I think it would go a little bit like this. I don't know why they have strip clubs in Australia. It doesn't make sense. I don't know why they have them. Because I don't think Australians know how to receive a lap dance. They don't know how to take a lap dance. So it always gets too awkward. The girl's dancing and she's naked and she's like, yeah. And the guy doesn't look at the nudity but just looks at her face because it's too uncomfortable for him and then starts a conversation. <laughs> You'll see, it happens. They always go, how long have you been doing this for? Oh, a couple of months. <laughs> Do you do anything else? Yeah, I'm starting to be a vet. You don't do that. <laughs> See, I know because I've been to strip clubs with European friends, Italians and uh, Dutch. And they know how to, they know what you're supposed to do, how to receive a lap dance. All you're supposed to do is just look at the girl and nod creepily. <laughs> just go, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm starting to be a vet. Shh, not talking. <laughs> I, um, I used to do drugs. <laughs> I don't anymore. I stopped doing drugs, but I used to. And I think the reason I used to do drugs is when they'd have those anti-drug videos in health or science class. The results of taking drugs were always way too extreme. I could never believe it. You know, be like, hey, John, do you want to try some beer? Yeah, okay. John is now brain dead. <laughs> hey, Marco, do you want to slip some glue? Yeah, okay. Marco is now pregnant. <laughs> hey, Trina, do you want to smoke some dope? Yeah, all right. Trina was shot in the vag. Just <laughs> way too extreme. And then you'd smoke some weed and you'd be like, my vag feels fine. My badge feels better than before. <laughs> They're lying to us, man. All right, I'm in Zay Michael Eady. See you later. Thanks, bye. All right, now, Luke, your set is coming up with Cambo. Anything the viewers should know? Try and keep your eyes on me instead of Cambo, because Cambo... <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Luke and Cambo! <laughs> Alright, hey guys. Uh, now, Luke's running a bit late uh, tonight, but what I've got is something a little bit better, in my opinion. Uh, I've managed to get the world's number one expert on evolution to come in and give us all a little bit of a chat, uh, a little bit scientific. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so please uh, welcome into the stage. Uh, round of applause, round of applause, everyone. Yeah. Hello. Thanks for having me. It's uh, uh, not an expert, Campbell. I am evolution in the flesh. Okay, so you're the, you're the actual evolution. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people think I'm a theory, but I'm not. I'm a real person. So uh, it's good to be here. You've probably got a lot of questions for me. Far away. <laughs> okay, uh, well, thanks. This is excellent. Uh, this is uh, better, in my opinion. Okay, well, uh, yeah, I do have some questions. All right. Um, okay, so we'll start off. Something that's baffled scientists for a long time is the pain mechanism. Very complicated. Uh, maybe you can finally explain a bit about how that works. Uh, yeah, sure, sure. Oh, well, I invented the pain mechanism so uh, people could detect uh, injury. Yeah, so they'd know they were uh, hurt. They could go get it fixed. Pretty handy. Okay, uh, that is handy. Okay, one, uh, one question would be once people know they're hurt, why does, it, why does it have to keep hurting? Well, you'd forget about it, wouldn't you? You know, you'd be, you know, you'd be you'd shot by an arrow and then you'd be, uh, you know, walking down, you, oh, I better go to the shops, you know? <laughs> you'd be halfway down aisle four and you bled to death, you know? How many people do you see bleeding to death in the shops, Cambo? Oh, None, thanks to me, evolution. <laughs> what else you got? All right. 
All right, this one's, uh, I guess, a bit personal, but uh, lately I've uh, started to see some signs of ageing. You know, I don't, ha I don't have any chest hair at all, but lately I've started to grow hair around my nipples. Maybe you can, uh, maybe you can tell me, you know, from an evolutionary point of view, how does this help me? You're not going to last very long in the wild with uh, cold nipples, are you? <laughs> but, I mean, isn't the point of evolution, you know, survival of the fittest? You know, sexual selection plays a big role. You know, what kind of girl's going to want to sleep with me if I've got hairy nipples? Sluts! <laughs> All right, Kimber, here's another scenario. Okay, so you're chasing a woolly mammoth down an iceberg, okay? Oh, uh, We've all uh, been there. Okay, the woolly mammoth jumps to safety, but not you, you get stuck in a snow cave. I don't really okay? see how this would ever happen. So you're happen. trapped in a snow cave, uh, okay? okay? You've got no food, and all your clothes are falling off, okay? I'm you're, naked? You're close to death. Then evolution comes in, bam, hairy titties, you're saved. <laughs> Warmest toast. Yeah, but I'm still trapped in a snow cave. Well, what, well, evolution can't do everything for you. I mean, what do you want... Dig out. What do you want, spade hands? They're only going to come in handy once, then they're just going to be... It's going to look weird. <laughs> okay, okay, I guess, uh, I guess that makes sense. All right, well, uh, maybe you can explain, uh, you know, scientists, another thing that's baffled them is sweating. Why we sweat, you know? Maybe you can explain why, why humans sweat. Okay, okay, so you're getting chased by a saber-toothed tiger in the desert. All right, maybe a more, maybe a more practical example. All right, that would uh, have been a good one, up. but all right, here we go. All right. Okay, so uh, you're at a bar and you see a girl you like, and uh, you know, you're looking at her, she's looking at you, things are starting to get a bit heated, and you know, you start to sweat, and she's like, oh yeah, that's, that's what I like. <laughs> I'm not sure, uh, I don't think girls like sweat. Are you serious? All right, uh, all right, well, when, you, when you get hot, you're running, uh, you know, it turns out you get water, it evaporates and has a cooling effect. It's pretty handy. Yeah, but humans wear clothes, so, I mean, the moisture just gets trapped in the fabric and smells bad. It doesn't really cool you at all. I mean, why did you evolve humans to wear clothes and sweat? Well, I don't know. I was hedging my bets, wasn't I? I didn't know both plans would work out. But Jesus, I've come up with this stuff 400,000 years ago. What do you want? All right. Uh, yeah, no, good, make a good point. All right. Well, another question uh, a lot of scientists have is, uh, you know, why do we have two kidneys? That's one that's baffled uh, people throughout the ages. You know, why not two hearts, something used for, you know? Nobody ever has a kidney attack. I don't know, I've been busy. I don't have time to think about this stuff. All right, evolution's a busy man. Oh, okay, what have you been busy doing? I've been, oh, uh, warfare. I've been evolving warfare uh, over the last 30 years. Make it, all, make it as good as it is. <laughs> Why have you been evolving warfare? Think, think about it, Cambo. You know, back in the old days, everyone just had sticks. You know, everyone just hitting each other with sticks. You know, it was a disaster. You know, then I brought out uh, swords, less stick violence. Then I brought out uh, guns, lowered swordings, 98%. <laughs> Pretty handy. So yeah, then eventually, Cambo, everyone's just going to have nuclear bombs struck to the back. Uh, imagine that—a a paradise where everyone's got a nuclear bomb on their back, and you know, you, you know, you get your toe stepped on. You're like, "I'll punch you for that, mate." Oh, don't punch me. I got a, I got a bomb on my back. Um, we'll die, and on my, on my pits will. Oh, okay. Let's let's go to the pub and have a drink. You know, everyone, everyone goes home and watches Frasier. You watch Frasier, Cambo? S smartest show on television. No. All right. Uh, no, not really. Uh not really a big Fraser fan. Okay, that's a pretty bad plan, evolution. Because what happens when you know somebody mentally unstable or you know a terrorist gets hold of, hold of a, a nuclear weapon? Nuke him, wouldn't you? Right in the face. That'll teach him. He'll die in regret. Huh? All right, I've got to say you're uh, you're not doing a great job, evolution. Uh, not doing a great job. Look at you. Look how gangly you are. Imagine all the all the tight spaces you could fit into. You know. You could put it, sit in a cupboard if you wanted to. Why would I want to sit or in a cupboard? Shimmy, bes shimmy beside a fridge, you know? <laughs> Reach around with your big gangly arm and grab an OJ. You have a refreshing drink. <laughs> All right, well, I guess... Uh, oh, look at your natural highlights, Cambo. They're looking to look good. They'll go grey one day, and then you can sort of brush them into wings like an Italian gangster. Okay, uh, I've got to say, uh, evolution, creationism is looking like a pretty good idea right about even now. A, even a, everyone's having a go at me lately. Do, do you know, some people don't even want to teach me in schools. Really? Yeah, yeah. They, wow, that's, you know uh, what I show them? I don't know my if I want to. Okay. I show them ass. Good. Yeah. <laughs> but your sense of humour is uh, terrible, and your idea is going to get a lot of people killed, all right? Uh, just, just for that, Camo, your kids are going to have uh, crab claws when they get older. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> crab claws, you've got to hug them, you get pinched on the neck. <laughs> you know? Do you know you're going to love that, don't you? Pinch on the neck. <laughs> doesn't, uh, doesn't evolution take hundreds of thousands of years? Yep. Well, it's not going to affect me or my children, then, is it? All right, well, your grandkids, your great, 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 great grandkids will have crab claws and be like, oh, what, what's with these? You know, someone must have pissed off evolution hundreds of years ago. Right. You know, that'll be you. They'll, they'll invent a time machine, come back for revenge, and they'll, they'll kick in the nads. Yeah. That can happen at any time. You okay. could be in a job interview, and these mutant crab claw kids come in, bam, you're not going to get that job. Okay, you know, yeah. and if you did, you did a great interview, but it's going to make it difficult. Oh, uh, well, you thanks, know? evolution. Uh... If I had a time machine, 
By the time machine came, I'd go back and uh, ride more dinosaurs. Oh, yeah, you know? of course. It's a shame I invented them to be uh, sexually attracted to volcanoes. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> so. Yeah, that didn't... <laughs> That didn't work out. You'd be there, you'd be a dinosaur, you'd be going, oh, I feel like a bit of sex, might have sex with this volcano. Oh! Yeah. That didn't work out. Oh, okay, well. Go get me the beer. All oh, right, thanks, Evolution. You made me hate science. Uh, thank oh, you, we've been uh, Luke and uh, Evolution, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, don't go anywhere. We've got plenty more stand up coming your way, including anyone for tennis, and of course, Dave O'Neill. Are you looking forward to the gig tonight? I just want them to love me. <laughs> well, how about we do something? Do you want to throw to you guys on stage? All right, uh, throw to me on stage. All right, so this is uh, this is Watson. This is Adam McKenzie and Tegan Higgin both, and we're Watson. I never would have said it like that. Sorry. It's okay. Good day, guys. Hi. Uh, hi. Good day. How are you? My name's Adam. This is Tegan, hi. and we're Watson. And to be honest, we do know what tonight has been missing. Political, Political satire. satire. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Mm, yeah. Bring on the fun. Because yeah. we are not only Australia's newest comedy duo, but we are also this country's most hard-hitting political commentators, which, which is going to be really great considering you're all from outside of Australia. No, 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 no. Yes. No, seriously, Woo. that's fine. We're going we're gonna to show you Australia's political landscape. You're going to learn stuff about oh, yeah, our yeah. political history. Mm. We're not afraid to attack any issue. No, no, no. Gough Whitlam. What a cunt. Politic fact. <laughs> there we go. Mm, hard yeah. hitting. Yeah, yeah. You know, asylum seekers, if they're finding it so hard to get a visa, they should apply for a MasterCard. Politifact! Fact. <laughs> but uh, you know what we're actually genuinely really upset about? The Australian government's abandonment of Julian Assange. I mean, yeah. all he really did was point out what we already knew about our political leaders. That they're cocksnaps. Controversial. Yeah. <laughs> all Julian Assange did was, was point out how much diplomatic bitching goes on. Yeah, essentially all he did was steal America's journal and publish it on the internet. It was like, dear diary, China is such a bitch. She's all like, where's my money? And I'm like, I will get it to you, bitch. <laughs> And you totally know that China and Finland are total lesbians. Absolutely. <laughs> Alright, so this comedy festival, we are going to tell you Australia's number one secret, but first we need to make something very, very clear. Just like WikiLeaks, we do not promote leaking. We are all about liberation and justice through the mechanism of transparency. I completely agree. Excellent. Which is why I put a camera in Tegan's bathroom. I'm sorry, what? Yeah. Transparency, Tegan. How do I know what's going on behind that closed door? You could be doing back channel deals with North Korea for all I know. In my towel? That could be a cultural thing. Adam, you're an idiot. No, I'm a journalist. And anyone who wants to know the truth can go to www.teganleaks.com. That is disgusting! Actually, to be honest, that's the first time I've kind of said that out loud. That sounds a little bit gross, but it is better than the thing that I had before. There though. was another option? There was another option. It <laughs> was, it was, www.tegan takes a dump of truth. What? Why would you say what? Dot org. I don't think Dot Adam, edu. No, there's not dot an education. AU, Shut up. Dot ca. Dot uk. Dot, I'm going around the room. Does dot it matter, Adam? Yeah, yeah. Adam, I'm making you feel at home. What? There is a massive... Adam, there is a massive difference between you filming well, me let's and... let's get this right. I'm not filming you. I don't have a 16mm camera and a sound crew in there. I'm taping you. Look, there is a big difference between finding out somebody's secrets and invading their privacy. And besides, we're meant to be telling them Australia's secrets, not each other's. You're absolutely right. I'm sorry, Tegan. But I know what you're all thinking. How big is Australia's secret? Allow us to explain. I don't know whether you all realise this, but secrets can actually be gauged in levels from 1 to 10, depending on how important they are. For example... Level number one is little lies that we believe in that make us happy. Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny. Happy marriages. The Greens. <laughs> Things we believe in but don't actually exist. Yeah, on the other side of that scale, there's uh, level eight secrets, mm. which are shit got real. Now, yeah. we all understand when shit gets real because they're easily identifiable because they usually have words like touched me and lesions in them. Mm. <laughs> level six secrets or top secret. Now, most people think top secret should be ranked a little higher than level number six, but what they don't realise is that there are an estimated 854,000 people in the US alone with top secret clearance, so not that top secret at all. It's not. And then there's level three, consumer secrets. The yeah. secret to getting slim, secret herbs and spices, the That's number right. one secret to a better sex life. All these things... Do you know that one? Do you know the sex life one? Oh, no, not really. It was, Are you sure? It's just an example. If 
if you knew it, you would tell me, yeah? Uh, because sure. I am rubbish. <laughs> Look, I'm really It's sure just you're really fine. bad. That's okay, Adam. I'm we're just, just gonna... terrible. That's all right, man. This Does is... it count as making her wet if she cries? Okay, we're just going to move. Does it? What? Is it, is it bad if when we're role playing, I get her to play me? Yes, that's bad. Oh, okay, you should have cool. ended on the So you're telling one. me that if there's a safety word, I should tell her. Yes, you should tell them, oh. Adam. Oh. All right, secrets, okay. all levels from one to okay. ten, depending on how volatile they are. Yeah, because some are just completely made up or gossip. For example, Adam gets an erection whenever he sees a cat. Mm. And then there's some that you just plain don't want other people to know. Adam is a fuckhead. I told you that in confidence. I'm sorry. <laughs> all the way up to level ten, which are the most dangerous secrets, the secrets that you don't want people to know, and that is the secret that we found out from the Australian government. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this level ten but secret... But what about level eleven secrets, Tegan? <laughs> Adam, there is no level eleven oh, secret. Oh, isn't there? Yes, there is. We all know it. How do you know that this isn't the dream? Ooh. You're waiting for a train, a train that doesn't exist. You know that it'll come. What? There we go. <laughs> I guess. Don't touch my totem. Don't touch my totem. I guess you know it's the real. How do now. I know this is the real dream or not? When you touch my, I'm you're not sorry. supposed to touch I my totem. I don't know what a totem is. Inception. How would you feel These if I touched your totem? A... How would you feel if I went around touching your totem? I don't have a totem. You don't have a totem. I don't have a. Get totem. a totem. Totally get a totem. Right. Jeez. How are you supposed to know if you're in real world, dream world? There we oh, go. That's my totem. Is that your totem? Yes. <laughs> You did this. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We're um we're Watson and we hope you have a lovely evening. Good night. Tease, you've just come off stage. Yeah. How'd it go? I need a drink. <laughs> <laughs>so we're anyone for tennis and uh, look I just want to want to level with you guys it's not uncommon for people to question our sexuality we're, uh, we're performers you know we uh, we perform in the theatre we're thespians we both have a preferred brand of hairspray and we both can't drive a manual car so the odds are stacked against us so we've written a song to address that girls are hot they turn me on their bodies are the best and all my life I've known that I'm attracted to the gorgeous, gorgeous female sex. sex Which is a shame cause I'm a man in every way Which means I have a penis on me every day I'm just trying to make sense of it all Cause I am a heterosexual So heterosexual he likes girls. When I get dressed, my private bits are out there on the loose. If there is a full-length mirror, it's like two naked dudes. I catch a glimpse of my penis before bed every night. And when I wake up, it's also up and looking me directly in the eye. I've seen girls' bits, but not as frequently at all. My eyes spend much more time looking at dick and balls. I'm just trying to make sense of it all. Cause I am heterosexual. When I have to urinate, I have to delegate my manly fingers to holding a penis. When I'm in the shower, my hands have to scour a lathered up wang and wet balls. When my bits get tangled, my hands go down my pants just moving and grabbing One big sweaty package, of course not forgetting The voluntary touching that I do when I'm lonely or just bored I've touched girls' bits but in comparison not a lot I'd say 12 times a day my hands are touching cock I'm just trying to make sense of it all Cause I am heterosexual The genitalia I've seen is male skewed The only way to fix this is to see more ladies nude I'm not saying I'm right or wrong But I hope this does explain Why I am staring at you Hiding in this female change room 
It's not my fault. Look, miss, I need this, can't you tell? Excuse me, I've interrupted, but I'm hiding as well. Hi! This will aid to set us straight, so please just help us out. You're all we've got, so let us watch. No, please don't grab that towel. We're just trying to make sense of it all. Can we see your boobies once more? No need to get angry at all. Do the police really need to be called? Cause we're 93% sure. That we are heterosexual. Thanks very much. Ladies and gentlemen, don't go anywhere after the break. Stand up from Dave O'Neill. I went out to lunch today. I love going to my favorite place to go out to dinner, to be honest with you guys, are Chinese restaurants, right? I love Chinese restaurants. Half the reason is because the food comes out so quick, it's almost a freaking superpower. <laughs> Like I went into a Chinese restaurant recently with two friends before we'd even finished sitting down. The waitress comes over and she goes, sardé chicken, Mongolian beef, sweet and sour pork. And I said, we haven't even looked at the menu. And she said, you're white guys, you always order the same thing. <laughs> I went, what? That is so, right? That is so, can we have three forks, please? <laughs> That's why I, I like to go to the Chinese restaurants that still have the menu on the wall in Chinese, right? So you know what I'm talking about because that's where they're hiding the good shit, right? And so I like to go there, I like to order one thing off the English menu, one thing off the wall, right? I went there recently on a, on a first date to a Chinese restaurant and I ordered and I said, can we please have uh, one satay chicken and one light blue in the corner there for $17.90. The waiter tried to talk me out of it, right? He's like, oh, excuse me, sir. And I said, uh-uh, shut the hell up. Can we have one satay chicken, one light blue? He came back about a minute and a half later and goes, there you go, sir, two satay chickens. <laughs> it gets worse, right? We left the restaurant and uh, I thanked the guy that was near the door. Uh, I said, hey, mate, thanks so much for having us. It was delicious, right? We got out onto the street. It wasn't until we were there that the girl I was with informed me that that guy that I thanked didn't actually work there. <laughs> he was just an Asian guy waiting to pay for his bill. Has anyone been speed dating here? Speed dating? Someone's going, oh, Gary tonight? That was good. That was more successful than when I went speed dating. Shit. I went speed dating once, right? And it's horrible. It's so bad. I got nervous. I was upstairs at a pub, right? And as I was walking up the stairs, I started getting nervous and a little bit scared, right? And so in my head, I went, it's fine. Just go in with a prison mentality, right? So that's what I did. I walked in, punched the biggest girl in the room so the rest of them <laughs> would respect me. Right? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> but it's a weird thing because as you sit there, you, you, it's like 10 different girls, right? And you get five minutes to chat with each. And each girl asks the same first question. I don't know why, but they do, right? And that question is, uh, what brings you here? S speed dating. <laughs> Are you here to do your fucking grocery shopping? But I got what the question meant, right? It means, why have you stooped to this pathetic level, basically? What is wrong with you, right? Now, I, know the, I don't know the answer that they want to hear. The answer that they want to hear is, oh, you know what? This is something I never thought about doing, but I actually just crashed my jet next door, and after rescuing all the people on board, I came into the pub to get some water for the infants that I saved, and it was then that I noticed your gorgeous eyes walking upstairs, and I thought, this is an opportunity too good to be missed. What brings you here? Right? But in my head, it was much easier <laughs> and funnier to say the opposite of, I think, what they wanted to hear. So I could just sit there and go, oh, to be honest, I'm just here to date the girl on table number nine. So if you wouldn't mind just talking to yourself for the next four minutes. Um, all the single ladies, all the single ladies. I read a story in the news uh, about six weeks ago now about a woman from the UK who suffered a heart attack caused by hyper arousal, right? What happens is she became so aroused to the point where it caused her to have cardiac arrest and she died, right? She was 33 years old. Now on one hand, 
this is a tragedy. But on the other hand, I didn't know this was possible. And now it's making me start to doubt my performance in the bedroom. Like sure, I've given a girl shaky legs from time to time, but I've never killed a chick. <laughs> and soft belly, I feel like this is what we should be aiming for. Pretty soon, women are gonna start insisting on this as well. As soon as this whole premature ejaculation phase is over, these are just gonna be the next wave of ads you hear. You're gonna get in your car, turn on the radio and just hear, ladies, are you sick of hearing all the ambulances arrive at your friend's place, but not yours? <laughs> gonna start cracking the shits at your boyfriend when he's not making it happen. You're like, what about the next door neighbor, Steve? He's given his girlfriend three heart attacks. She can no longer use her legs. What the hell have you done for me? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is uh, that time of the night where I get to introduce our first uh, very special guest. This man is one of the best comics in the country. He's also been a uh, great supporter of the show, and it's so lovely for us to have him here to perform to you tonight. Please welcome one of the best, Mr. Dave O'Neill. Oh, you're, very, you're very handsome, isn't he, young Tommy? Oh, yes, I'd have a crack, but anyway, that's... <laughs> Sure, don't relax, all right. Like your camera work, awesome. Now there's a bit of mix-up. I'm actually the stripper, so let's get into it. Here we go. Are we, are we ready? Are we ready? What? What? I was walking the city the other day, and I saw coming towards me. It looked like a hunched-over middle-aged woman with sagging breasts, hanging with this kid. I thought, look at that. That's disgusting. But it was one of those mirrored office blocks. It was me. So uh, <laughs> shirt staying on, you know. <laughs> when you think you're looking hot, and you go out and you see your reflection, you go, oh my god, is that? Is that Renee Lawrence from the Barley Nine? Oh, she's waving at me. Oh, 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 no, that's me. Oh, no. And look, I've got the heroin strapped to me. Check it out. Look at that. It's... She's a lesbian. She's in jail. But anyway, hey. Not for being a lesbian. No, no. That's, that's not an offence. That's not an offence. Of course. It's... Oh, Jesus. I've gone too far. But anyway. Uh... Hey, it's good to be here, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you had nowhere else to go. The uh, Salvation Army is open soon. Uh, I'll be joining you, but don't worry about that. No, it's great because I've got three children. Uh, they're seven, four and two. They're in the car, so uh, we will keep it quick. Got about ten more minutes left on the Wiggles tape, so uh, they'll be champing the bit. Uh, they, their mother's gone to the pokies. Who can blame them? Um, no, no, they're at home in the wardrobe or the time-out room, as I call it. Um, no, it's a joy to be here because I don't get out much and really putting the bin out these days is a night out for me. And uh, ooh, I love Thursday nights and sometimes we have recycling the same week and I'm buggered those weeks. <laughs> it's good to be here. I'm quite well educated. Can you pick I'm quite well educated? Okay, just guess what degree I did. Just have a guess. I oh, get, fuck you, it was art. <laughs> anyway, well, there's something wrong with an arts degree. So was the barman, the cleaner. They've all got arts degrees. Awesome. Okay, have a guess. Then what uni did I go to? Smarties, what uni? Melbourne, no fucking way. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I went to Mitcham High School. This now they don't let you in if you went to Mitcham High. No, come on, anyone else? Monash, La Trobe. I went to La Trobe, which is Latin for can't get into Monash. And and where did you did you go anywhere? You went to Monash. What did you do? You did an arts degree too. All right, fantastic arts graduate down the front here. No, it's excellent. I don't know. Did you graduate? You had a party. Your parents came. You threw the thing up in the air. You did. You did for the purpose of this story. You did. You did. You did. You're going like that, but you mean that. You mean, yeah, of course I did, Dave. Yeah, the whole thing. And because uh, it's different at La Trobe Arts, there's no, there's no graduation ceremony. There's just a mini bus that picks you up at the uni and takes you straight to Centrelink. Yeah. <laughs> yep. They stop at for Red Rooster, not for food, but a career option. You know, like. <laughs> But you know, I actually did get a Melbourne Uni for one year and um, after my arts degree at La Trobe, which I took me eight years to finish and yeah, fucking medicine, seven years, get fucked. How stupid are those people? But anyway, <laughs> I went to Melbourne for one year and that was good fun to meet girls and sit around on the lawn. You should just go fucking hang out. Melbourne Uni up there, go and hang out there. There's some, anyway, I used to sit there and you know, but the thing is I was from Mitcham, but I didn't let them know that. I pretended I lived in Fitzroy. <laughs> and, <laughs> So I'd be sitting on the lawn with the girls going, yeah, I'm into recycling and I ride a fixie bike and I'm into John Butler and I'm thinking in the back of my mind, if they find out last year I had my 21st at the keg in Nattawani, I'm fucked. <laughs> I like music, I love music. Do you love music? I love music. I love music. You know what I don't like? I don't like, I don't like Australian rap music. I don't, I don't know. What? Yeah, I know. Look, I like American rap where big black guys get out of prison and sing songs like, cop, kill a nigga, trigger with a motherfucker. <laughs> 
something like that anyway. Because you turn on like Triple J, and we've got nothing really to be angry about in Australia, have we? Really? We're not that angry. You turn on Triple J, and it's like, I went down the railway station, I'm full of frustration. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, tried to, I tried to buy a ticket machine, broke, no one fixed it. <laughs> yeah. I get on the train, it's full of pain. I see a ticket inspector, I try to deflect her. She gives me a fine, it's 120 bucks. Public transport sucks. Yeah. No. There's more. There's more. <laughs> I got 28 days to pay. Check credit card or b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b but I bought my ease off you. What the fuck? You know. <laughs> Capital Brothers, right? Two guys, right? Right. They, this is a band, is it? Two blokes, right? So what happens, right? Everyone's going fucking mental, right? Everyone's going... <laughs> We're all fucking eating off our brains. But I bought Tic Tac, so I was pretending. And... <laughs> But they were the orange ones. Anyway, these two blokes walk out on stage. There's heaps of equipment on. Just two blokes, two pommy blokes walk out on stage. And everyone goes, ah, oh, it's the Chemical Brothers. Fucking unreal. The guy just goes like this. He pushes one button. He goes, oh, yeah, fucking out of control. Woo! So he just has a beer and walks off. Oh, how you going, Barry? That's fucking it for the whole gig. One button. <laughs> Maybe this guy at home, he flushes the toilet. Oh, out of control. Better open up the window. <laughs> yeah, whoa. I've been Dave O'Neill. You've been great. Thanks for sticking around. I'll see you again. Cheers. Oh, okay, crazy. A massive thank you to everyone that's appeared on the show tonight, uh, the Studio A cast, and also our special guests, anyone for tennis, and Dave O'Neill. Thank you for all you guys for turning up tonight at our very first Studio A stand-up spectacular. Well, we're going to use the word anyway. We're back at the same time, same place next week, but we'll be back in the studio. To all you people at home, to all you people here, thank you. Good night.